Modern cruise ships are true marvels of engineering. From their sheer size and powerful propulsion systems to their luxurious interiors and charming amenities, these magnificent vessels capture the imagination like no other form of transportation. While they are certainly fascinating, many wonder what happens to them when they are no longer fit for service. Behind the scenes of the industry lies the equally fascinating world of ship recycling and disposal. Like cars and airplanes, liners eventually end up in the scrapyard. Today we're going to enter the unfamiliar world of the liner graveyard. We'll learn where these once glorious ships end up and explain the scrapping and recycling process that destroys these giant ships. We will also answer questions about the lifespan of a typical liner and whether its disposal has an impact on the environment. So let us unravel the mysteries of liner graveyards. How long does a liner last? Typically, a full-size liner can remain in service for about 30 years, but the exact lifespan depends on the needs of the company operating each ship. Some luxury companies retire their ships and either sell or scrap them. Other companies will extend the life of their ships through refurbishment. These may be simple upgrades to the interior decor and furnishings, or more substantial technological upgrades. If properly maintained and modernized, a liner can remain in service for up to 40 years. What happens when a liner is retired? When the decision is made to retire an airliner, it must go through a thorough decommissioning process. This process involves more than turning off the engines and locking the doors. Retired aircraft must also undergo a detailed environmental assessment by a neutral party. During this process, the entire ship is inspected to ensure that all hazardous materials are present. After the fuel tanks are safely emptied, the fuel lines are drained to ensure that no hazardous materials are present. The assessment takes into account other potentially hazardous materials such as asbestos, mercury, hydrocarbons, and various corrosive heavy metals. These must be removed and disposed of in accordance with all relevant environmental regulations. The interior of the ship can be completely dismantled after the decommissioned liner has been assessed for potential environmental hazards. This process involves the removal of all interior furniture and equipment. In some cases, it may be auctioned for reuse or scrapped to recover materials. Some interior components, such as artwork, kitchen appliances, high-end furniture, and even chandeliers, can generate significant revenue for the company during the auction. This helps defray some of the cost of sending the ship to a scrapyard. Disposal of valuable equipment and materials. Finally, the decommissioned liner is dismantled at a shipyard that specializes in recycling large ships. In addition to removing the engines and other major components, the steel hull of the ship is dismantled so that the metal can be melted down for reuse. It won't surprise you to learn that full-size liners are made from vast amounts of high-quality, non-corrosive metal. When properly recycled, this metal and wiring can be worth an incredible amount of money especially if it is not overly corrosive. This is what makes the ship recycling industry lucrative. Even the thousands of windows on a liner can be removed and recycled like any other type of glass. Due to the sheer size of a liner, the recycling and dismantling process cannot take place in a typical scrapyard. This is where ship graveyards come in. These specialized scrapyards are equipped to handle large ships they have huge harbors where decommissioned ships can be towed. From here, crews can work to dismantle the ships and collect materials and components for recycling. In many cases, luxury liners are dismantled and scrapped along with larger vessels such as cargo ships, tankers, and research vessels. The best known liner graveyards tend to be in poorer countries where labor is cheap. These include the following. Alang Shipbreaking Yard in India, considered the world's largest derelict shipbreaking yard. The facility houses 183 full-size shipbreaking yards and numerous docks where decommissioned ships can be towed for the initial stages of disposal. 
Aliaga Ship Recycling Facility in Turkey, internationally recognized for its more environmentally friendly approach to recycling and other types of ships. Thousands of workers work harmoniously to recycle steel and other valuable materials from decommissioned ships. This recycling facility also gained prominence during the COVID-19 pandemic, when containment measures hit this industry particularly hard. Numerous companies sold Aliaga liners for recycling and demolition. The Chittagong Shipbreaking Yard in Bangladesh. This huge shipbreaking yard houses about one-fifth of the world's derelict ships, so it's a massive operation. In fact, more than 200,000 people work at the Chittagong Yard at any one time. Although the facility handles all types of shipbreaking, its main specialty is steel recovery. It was once considered a major tourist attraction in Bangladesh, but had to be closed to the public for safety reasons. Unfortunately, the Chittagong Shipbreaking Yard has come under international scrutiny for its poor safety record, with reports that approximately one worker dies every week. Gadani Shipbreaking Yard in Pakistan. The world's third largest shipbreaking yard is located on the coast of the Arabian Sea in southern Pakistan. At any given time, the Gadani Shipbreaking Yard can accommodate 125 full-size vessels, including full-size liners. Although the facility has reduced its size and number of employees in recent years, it still handles many ships each year, particularly those from the Mediterranean. The Economics of Liner Cemeteries Scrap recycling on this scale can be very profitable. In particular, the high-grade steel that can be extracted from the outer hull of a liner can be a valuable commodity in a resource-poor country. Shipbreaking yards are therefore betting on decommissioned liners and buying them from the companies that own them. While the companies may have to pay certain environmental fees when the ship is decommissioned, much of this money can be recouped when the ship is sold. Shipyards can be profitable and sustainable businesses, providing much needed employment opportunities in countries and regions with low employment rates. Is it possible to visit a ship graveyard? While viewing the skeletons of once glamorous liners may appeal to some adventurous individuals, most cemeteries are closed to the general public. This is simply for safety reasons and certain regulations that require people to undergo rigorous training before entering such facilities. Although some facilities used to be open to the public, such as the shipbreaking yard in Chittagong, Bangladesh, most are now closed. To satisfy the curiosity of locals and tourists alike, some of these cemeteries occasionally offer guided tours and photo opportunities, but these are usually reserved for days when the scrapyard is inactive. Some of these ship graveyards have even been featured in major Hollywood movies such as Avengers, Age of Ultron, which featured a scene set in a South African shipyard. How much is a decommissioned ship worth? In general, the value of a liner depends primarily on its tonnage and the quality and condition of the steel from which it was built. A well-built, medium-sized liner can weigh between 60,000 and 120,000 tons. Most of that weight will be steel, assuming that the steel was not badly corroded and that the ship had been used relatively recently, its scrap value might be about $2 million. Of course, larger ships might be worth even more. Instead of setting a specific price for a ship, most companies actually auction off their decommissioned and dismantled vessels. Allowing different graveyards to bid on a ship makes it difficult to predict the final price. In addition, the value of scrap metal can change over time, so in many ways the global market dictates the value of a decommissioned liner. While the world of liner graveyards can be fascinating, relatively few people understand how it works. Many assume that retired liners remain stationary and simply disintegrate, but they are quickly broken down and recycled. Even after their days of carrying eager passengers across the world's most exciting waters are over, these huge ships are still incredibly valuable. In many ways, the dismantling and scrapping of a liner is the final stage of its life. The life cycle of a liner, from its construction by thousands of skilled workers through its operation for up to 40 years, 
to its complete dismantling and scrapping is truly fascinating. The fact that a significant proportion of leaners are reused and recycled after all these years of service is testament to the modern industry's commitment to sustainability and environmental responsibility.